Today I've got a nice problem involving a function which is defined in terms of a continued fraction. So in particular, we wanna look at the function f of x which is one over 2x plus one over 2x plus one over 2x plus one over 2x continued on and on and on. So the fact that this is continued on and on and on makes it, like I said, a continued fraction. And our goal is to find the derivative of f. So let's see how we might approach this. Maybe the best way to do it is see if we can find something that nears a closed form for f of x. And let's maybe introduce a little bit of notation in order to do that nicely. Let's set y equal to f of x. And now let's notice we have y equals one over two x plus, but now notice that this big chunk right here, which I'll lightly box in this brown color, is exactly our original function. So we've got one over two x plus y. So we've got this nice way of describing the function y in terms of itself. Okay, well, let's notice that we can maybe quote unquote easily solve this for y. If we cross multiply, we'll get y squared plus 2x times y equals the number one. Okay, but we can easily complete the square here and we'll see that we have y squared plus 2xy plus x squared equals one plus x squared. And now we can factor out this left-hand side and we'll have y plus x quantity squared equals one plus x squared. And now we can take the square root of both sides and then solve for y and we'll see the following nice formula for y. We have y is equal to minus x plus minus the square root of one plus x squared. Okay, nice. You might say, well, this is not super great because I have this plus minus here. And which one is it? Does y take the positive value or does it take the negative value? And in fact, that's gonna depend on the input for x. So some takes, sometimes it takes the positive value in front of the square root and sometimes it takes the negative value. But we're not gonna worry too much about that because we're just using this form as an intermediate step. And in the end, we won't have anything to do with this left over. Okay, so that being said, I'm gonna take this and split it into two pieces. One piece that I'll call y plus, which will be the one associated to the plus sign, and the other one, well, you guessed it, will be y minus, which is the one attached to the minus sign. So there we have it. Now we have y plus and y minus defined as I just said. And those are maybe the ones that we wanna hang on to at the moment. So these are just accessory functions. They're definitely related to our original function, but they're not, either of them is not equal to the original function on the domain of the original function. Okay, so now from here we'll take the derivative of each of those. So notice y prime plus, using standard derivative rules, turns into something like this we'll have negative one plus x over the square root of one plus x squared. And then y minus prime will likewise be negative one minus x over the square root of one plus x squared. Okay, nice. But now let's notice on the domain of y equals f of x, which maybe I'll let you think about that as a homework exercise, what is the domain? Is it all real numbers? Is it restricted? Maybe I'll leave that up to you, maybe post it in the comments. Full math courses for free? Yes, that's right. Full university level math courses for free. Where can you get this? Math Major. Math Major is my second channel where I post videos that span full courses taught at the university level. Currently I have complex analysis, linear algebra, differential equations, 
proofwriting, and I'm currently working on a new abstract algebra course. Next up, I'm planning to bring courses in Lie algebras and Galois theory. So head on over to youtube.com slash at math major and subscribe. But anyway, on the domain of y equals f of x, we'll have y prime minus y plus prime times y prime minus y minus prime is equal to zero. And that's because on the domain of f of x, y will be either equal to this thing with a plus or this thing with a minus, which means y prime will be equal to y prime plus or y prime minus. But that means at least one of these differences will be zero, so that means when they take the product, you get something that is identically zero. Okay, so now let's multiply that out to see what we get. So this is gonna give us something like y prime squared minus, let's see, y plus prime plus y minus prime multiplied into y prime, and then plus y plus prime times y minus prime, and we have that's equal to zero. And now let's look at this. Here we have the sum of y plus prime and y minus prime, and over here we have the product of y plus prime and y minus prime. So that means we need to calculate those two objects. But it's actually not too tricky to do because the sum will simplify very quickly given that one of them is attached to a plus and one of them is attached to a minus. So in fact, these will sum to negative two, which when combined with this minus sign will give us a plus two. So that means we have y prime squared plus two y prime plus that product. But this product after expanding is like a difference of squares. And that's because over here, this is exactly equal to minus the quantity one plus x over the square root of one plus x squared. Great, so clearly when you take the product of y plus prime and y minus prime, the cross terms will cancel. And that's going to in the end leave us with minus. So we'll have this term squared, which will be x squared over one plus x squared, and then minus the one squared. So that'll give us minus the number one. And that's where this minus sign right here was inherited from this minus sign that we took out of the whole thing. Okay, great, so we've got some sort of expression like that for y prime. Now let's do a little simplification of this term that involves x's, and then we'll bring our new expression up to the top of the board. So we'll start by rewriting the number one as one plus x squared over one plus x squared. So let's do that. We have one plus x squared over one plus x squared. But now when we subtract that from x squared, we simply get the number negative one in the numerator. That cancels with the negative one here. So that'll give us plus one over one plus x squared when all is said and done. Okay, so that's looking good. Now let's maybe start with that at the top. Okay, so this is where we ended off. And now we'd like to push this towards some sort of formula for y prime that depends on itself. So you might just think that you'll solve this for y prime by thinking of this as a quadratic equation in the variable y prime, but that'll just get back to exactly where we were. And so the trick is to instead turn this into like a functional equation for y prime, similar to the functional equation we have here for for y. Okay, so let's see where we might get that. So this is gonna give us y prime times y prime plus two equals negative one over one plus x squared. And now let's introduce a little bit more notation just to make everything simpler. So let's set this thing equal to u. And by this thing, I mean this function which is on the right hand side of the equation. So we have u equals negative one over one plus x squared. Okay, so now moving some things around, that'll tell us that y prime is in fact equal to u over two plus y prime. And look, that gives us something fairly similar to what we have over here. 
Okay, so now let's expand that out again. So this is gonna be u over two plus y prime, but we'll use this expression for y prime. So that'll be u over two plus y prime. And then we can expand that copy of y prime out as well. And that'll leave us with u over two plus u over two plus u over two plus y prime. And now I think we see where we're headed. So this builds this continued fraction version of y prime. So we have y prime equals u over two plus 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 dot 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 and on and on and on. So where u is that function that we had up there. Okay, now what is something that I find pretty interesting about what we're looking at here? Well, I'd like to notice that here we've got f of x is defined as 2x plus all of this repeating stuff. But when we found f prime, which was y prime, we got two in all of this repeating stuff. So the role of 2x is being replaced with the role of two. So is that just random or did that occur because 2x differentiates to two? And then furthermore, we got this extra function popping up into this situation, this function u. So my question is, is the structure of this function u also random or does it have something to do with the original structure here? I guess really what I'm getting at is if we have a function which is defined in some sort of continued fraction like this, can we get some sort of formula based on the repeating parts of the continued fraction to immediately write down the derivative in its continued fraction version? So maybe if you have any ideas about that, post it in the comments. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpinmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.